talk about small doses, potent truths for daily use. I felt that that book shared so much honesty, so much realness that I think that I don't often think about because I'm predominantly in white spaces. So there's a lot of things I just like push in the back of my mind or not even think about that Amanda demands that you think about. One of my favorite parts of the book reads, wokeness is a constant state of awareness that can undoubtedly be stressful, frustrating, and anger-inducing as one acknowledges the endless stream of racial injustice that continues to plague people of color. Let's focus on the word constant. I think a lot of people feel like, oh, I'm woke. Like it's, you know, level 31 on Pokemon Go. It's not. It is a constant reevaluation, constant truth telling, constant self reflection. It is a constant way of holding yourself accountable, holding other people accountable. I look at it as an endless spectrum. You just constantly, you just move in. Every day you learn something new. Every day, you experience things new. We do not know everything. Our one lens, meaning the way we view the world, we we cannot be that self-centered to think that woke is just, I just know these eight buzzwords and I got it. That's a false narrative. Another part that got me is Hairstyles are an integral part of black culture. Unfortunately, they have also been used to discriminate against black folks. I think people don't understand that. There needs to be more conversation surrounding that. For example, I have locks. I have never made it like a secret that I have locks. I try to keep like my locks out there whatever like it doesn't bother me that I have locks but it clearly makes people uncomfortable that I have locks I have heard some crazy responses to my locks I am very cognizant of when I walk in the room what this hairstyle um, may do for me it will cause you know um, white people to want to touch my hair um, without permission one, I'm not giving permission. I don't really like people touching my hair anyway, but I'm not your animal, right? Or people assuming that I smoke weed because I have locks or that I'm Rastafarian because I have locks. And it's ignorant on both ends. One, not every person who have locks or dreads, right, um, smokes weed. And not every Rastafarian uh, have locks and also smoke weed. It's just like these people are just ignorant all around. I have yet to met a black person who then just uplift me because of my locks. But people who are non-black, you know, have a lot to say and want to touch my hair. And I've never had the urge to want to touch somebody else's hair. So I'm very confused on that. You know, she talks about um, in the book in chapter two about the black national anthem. And she writes, Rosamund Johnson wrote the song in the 1900s. Somehow that did not make it into my consciousness until the 10th grade. Relatable. Relatable. I don't know if it was a 10th grade, but I did feel silly not knowing um, the Black National Anthem until like, <sighs> until a time. So I can really do like a two hour review of this book, but I decided not to, and I would pick just a couple, um, parts of the book that I really enjoy. Another one was, ignorance is not bliss, but ignorance of other people's ignorance is. 
True, true, true. I feel that I personally got this book from the library. But I personally feel like I'm going to buy this book. One, <laughs> supporting the sister. Uh, two, it's a phenomenal book. Period. End of discussion. So, I think you should go and get yourself a copy of Amanda Sale's Small Doses, Potent Truths for Everyday Use. Um, because that everyday use part, that part, listen, get into it. That's all I'm saying. Get into it. You will not regret it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification button, and comment comment let me know did you read this book are you trying to read this book do you want to dive deeper into this book with me is that what you're feeling because i feel what you feel have a wonderful day thank you for subscribing